I was um, around maybe the age of eight. My mother explained that she had gone through it herself and it was just something that we had to do. It had been decided by an older um, family member and it was a female older family member who had just decided that it has to happen to every single girl in the family. My FGM took place back in Iran. I don't actually remember what happened, which could be down to the fact that it was very traumatic. Female genital mutilation consists of either uh, partially or to totally removing the female genitalia. Majority of the time, the remaining skin is pulled together and stitched from top to bottom and left with a very small opening and sometimes not even a match that can get through. I have experienced this violence at the age of seven organized by my family. I was actually cut back home in Somalia. For my mother, it was really to be accepted to the society. I'm being cut for my future husband. And this practice is done to limit a girl or a woman's sexual pleasure. It's the idea that women will not want to take part in sex or will not want to lust the same or opposite sex. It's really fundamentally down to control. Although this is actually quite a physical procedure which involves removing body parts, it's not always done by somebody who is trained to do it. It can be an older uh, person in the family, a grandmother or an older woman in the community. FGM, it happens globally, it's not specific to one country. FGM is an issue uh, in Africa, Asia. We now know it also happens in parts of South America. We know cases in, in the Middle East. People give you many reasons. They will say to you, it's a cultural practice, it's tradition. Fundamentally, FGM, it's violence against women and, uh, and children. It's a form of sexual assault. It's child abuse. There are absolutely no medical benefits to FGM. It is very, very damaging. It leaves emotional, physical scars on women and girls. And it's something that stays with people for the rest of their lives. There are women who suffer great consequences as a result of having FGM, such as having difficulties when they're giving birth, having lots of problems in their sexual life when they get older. And they really experience ongoing flashbacks, sexual dysfunction, a severe depression. The women who experience FGM are not different to the women who experience rape. It's a similar thing, except this time they use a knife. It feels like the moment uh, you're born as a girl, society punishes you for your body to be alterated to a certain way. FGM, it's a part of your body's taken away to, in, in order to control you. Now, when I underwent FGM, Jim, I didn't have a clue uh, where it was. Actually, I felt it was important that I came out and actually shared my story so people know it can happen to any girl. My daughter was not just protected from FGM, she is, you know, a very proud feminist, you know, who has her own opinion, her own views, you know, chooses what to do with her body. One of the reasons that the conversation can be dismissed is because people think it's not happening around me, so it doesn't concern me. But it is happening. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. And although um, somebody did try to violate me, I take a lot of strength and pride in, in my own body. And with FGM now, there are clinics and you can actually get physical support and emotional support. And it's something that I would urge any survivor to um, look into because it, it helps you really take your steps in your journey to learn to understand your body more and to um, you know be empowered in the fact that you are a survivor this is hashtag our stories what's yours subscribe for more stories about people changing their world